Dear friends, welcome back! This is Nick from Educate.tv and today I have something special to show you. The chip, the $9 computer has arrived and we are going to see how it performs and if it is a good option for our projects. Without any further delay, let's get started! Back in May, I backed a campaign on Kickstarter, a campaign about the first computer that will cost under $10. The campaign raised uh, over $2 million to bring the project in life. Since I was one of the first backers of the project, I received my $9 computer a few days ago and since then I use it daily to see if it can change the way we make things. The chip is a very small but very powerful port. In order to see how small it is, check this out. It is smaller than the Raspberry Pi A Plus and even smaller than the Arduino Uno. Despite its small size, it offers a 32-bit CPU running at 1 GHz, 512 MB DDR3 RAM memory, 4 GB of flash memory, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4, 8 GPIO pins, SPI, IS2C and so on, composite video output, it can run on a LiPo battery, it can charge LiPo batteries and of course it runs Linux. That's a really impressive hardware if you consider the price of it. It costs $9, but adding the $20 shipping cost makes it a bit more expensive. Even with that price, the port is amazing. What else can a maker ask for that price? But let's now see how to use the port and the software of it. As we said before, the port runs Linux. Unfortunately, the port does not have an HDMI output, but a composite video output. I don't know the reason for that decision. It might be the license fees of the HDMI. In their website, the creators of the board claim that they chose the composite video output since it is used by the most screens worldwide. Every television has a composite video input so the chip board can be used with almost all televisions available today. The makers of the board claim that they will provide an HDMI output capability soon via an add-on board. In order to use the board, all you have to do is to plug in a USB hub in order to use your keyboard and mouse, connect the composite video cable that comes with the board to your television and power up the board using a 5V power supply. There is no need to set up anything at all. The boot up sequence takes about 1 minute or less and after that you are ready to use the board. The Bluetooth and Wi-Fi work out of the box. You just have to enter your Wi-Fi password and you are already connected to the internet. It couldn't be easier. The graphical user interface is very fast and responsive. The programs take some time to load. Don't expect the speed of your desktop computer, this board is not intended for desktop work. The resolution of the screen is limited to 640 by 480 since it uses the composite video input, but with the use of the HDMI adapter the board can provide full HD resolution. Since it uses a Linux distribution, there is a ton of software available to download via the package manager. You can download anything from scientific software to games. You are only limited by the internal storage which is limited to 4GB and there is no SD card slot available. The chip team is working to develop a library in order to be able to use the GPIO pins of the board easily with our projects. It is not ready yet, but I think it will be soon. That's the reason I haven't prepared any simple project to show you, but I will build one as soon as the library is ready. Let's now see how much current it needs in order to operate. As you can see, when the processor is working, it needs up to 3 watts of power to operate, thus 600 milliamps of current. When the processor is idle, the current draw drops to around 300 milliamps. That's a lot of current compared to an Arduino, but at the same level with a Raspberry Pi. Due to the high current draw, I thought that the temperature of the board might be high. So I used this infrared thermometer I built with Arduino in order to see the temperature of its IC on the board. As you can see, some parts of the board get hot after a few minutes of operation. The processor is covered by this plastic case, so I can't measure its temperature directly, but the plastic case is warm. If you are interested in the thermometer, I will post a video about it next Saturday, so stay tuned. 
As a final word, I'm really impressed with the chip computer. It has a very nice design which makes things a lot easier for makers that require a large amount of processing power. The built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities is a direction that every board maker should follow. Also, the built-in LiPo charger circuit makes the board easily portable. This board has everything so you can start working at once. If I compare this board with a Raspberry Pi, I have to say that I personally prefer the chip computer, because it has everything I need for a project already embedded. The software of it still needs a lot of work, but of course, I use one of the first units out there, so the software will improve a lot until it reaches mass production this summer. I think the chip computer is a great addition to our toolset and it will allow us to develop more interesting projects more easily than ever before. I am looking forward to start using it. The chip computer is available now to pre-order, but don't expect it to ship before summer. They have to ship the boards for the Kickstarter backers first. You can find a link for it in the description of the video. If this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribed. In this channel, I post videos about do-it-yourself projects every Saturday. I build projects with Arduino, Raspberry Pi, I build robots and simple electronic circuits. I love making things and helping people doing the same. I hope that you will join our community. Until next Saturday, watch, learn, build.